car pack, ready to roll. Summer is sun, feeling bold. Traverse City calling me. A road trip sound of liberty. Windows down, spirits high. Lighthouse waiting by the sky. Cops and donuts, tasty treat. Grooving to that summer beat. Hey guys, welcome to your adventure compass. Today, we're on a little bit of a road trip. I have some work up in Traverse City, so we're headed up that way, and I thought what a perfect opportunity to cover some of the things in Traverse City and the surrounding areas. Don't know where we're gonna head exactly, we'll see, but come along with us for this fun adventure. Now, currently, we're up just past Clare, Michigan, off of 127, and I thought this was kind of interesting there is a rest stop here, but it's not just a rest stop, it's a Michigan Welcome Center. And I find that interesting because we're pretty much in the middle of the state and it seems a little late to put in a Welcome Center. Those are usually at the, uh, the border when you cross into the state. So kind of interesting, but it's very well decorated. Got some uh, metal sculptures and some very well done flower beds over here. And over this way, some more metal sculptures not exactly sure what all this is I guess it does kind of symbolize Michigan because it looks like they're working on the roads and that's pretty much all that seems to happen here in Michigan is a lot of road work never ending they do say that our state flower is the orange barrel and uh, this kind of sums it up right here welcome to Michigan all right guys we're here in Traverse City we're on the peninsula at the very end at the lighthouse and we're gonna take a look around and uh, let's take a look at the sign here real quick. So this is Mission Point Lighthouse. It says it was established in 1870. And this is also the 45th parallel, or halfway between the North Pole and the equator. Uh, you can see right down here on the map where the uh, 45th parallel runs all the way across the world. So this sign here shows you what this looked like back when it was built. You can see the, uh, the old car here and the lighthouse keeper. Now this is not a giant lighthouse like you might imagine. It's, it's decent size. I would say it's probably, I don't know, 40, 50 feet up there to the top. We're going to find out though. Guys, if you've never seen the inside of a lighthouse and what it looks like up at the top, I do have a video from the lighthouse when we stayed in South Haven, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes if you guys want to see it. The other thing that's interesting about this lighthouse is that I have some paintings at home. So we had a lighthouse-themed bathroom in our house, and uh, this actual lighthouse is one of the paintings. Kind of interesting. Here's the view out in front of the lighthouse. A lot of people out walking the beach. You can kind of see there's some rocks out there in the water. Also right next to the lighthouse is the Hessler Log House. And uh, this says from 1854 to 1856, Joseph and Mary Hessler built the house of pine and hemlock logs. And it's uh, it's been here ever since. So let's go take a look. We can't go inside, but we can look at it. It is right here. I guess we can look inside the windows. We can't, uh, we can actually go in, it's not open, but we should be able to see inside. They do have some lights on. Let's see if I can uh, cover it, there we go. Should be able to see that pretty decent there. All right, so we can enter in from the other side here and kind of see, now there's still glass, but you can see a little bit better inside here see there's a ladder that goes up to the uh, second floor um, kind of like a little rafter up there and it looks like they just have some plastic storage toes they didn't have plastic storage toes back then but they did have that wooden chest that you see there and take a look at that bed it's really really small a little uh, chamber pot on the floor that is the uh, that is the bathroom of the past Pretty cool. Look at the old kerosene lamp and the clock. And there's a rifle over the door there.
Out on the peninsula, you'll find plenty of orchards, lots of cherry trees, and also vineyards. We're going to be stopping at one of the wineries in just a minute to check it out. I do not know how many wineries are on the peninsula, but it's got to be at least 20. They are everywhere and they're building more. And check that cherry tree out, guys. I know we lost a couple of them. They're so full of cherries, the trees are falling over. We stopped at this uh, little stand here, and it is a U pick stand, but they also have some cherries available, so we're gonna go take a look because we don't really have the time to stop and pick because we're on a time crunch, but uh, did want to get some cherries while we're here. Check out those fresh picked cherries. They look amazing. We are definitely getting one of these to take home. So we did end up getting a cup of cherries and they're mixed. So there's uh, some slightly sweet and some really sweet. The uh, lighter ones are slightly sweet. And uh, this was $5. They did have uh, like a big quart size type thing. Uh, it was $9. These, these are fresh picked. I mean, these were, I just watched her picking some off the tree in front of me here. So these are fresh picked. They're uh, they're nice and uh, you know they haven't been sitting in a cooler or anything. They, these were probably picked within the last 24 hours. So definitely worth the price here on the peninsula in Traverse City. All right, so we've stopped off at Chateau Grand Traverse, and uh, I think we're going to buy a bottle of wine here because we've had this before. In fact, 18 years ago, my wife and I spent one of the days of our honeymoon here at the winery. They have a bed and breakfast. All right, here we are, Chateau Grand Traverse on the old Mission Peninsula. They have a tasting room. And I don't know if things are still the same as they were before, but they had a little store area inside where you could purchase different bottles of wine and wine accessories. We're gonna find out in just a minute because we're headed in to the tasting room. Right down here, there's a Riesling, and this is the late harvest Riesling, which is a little bit sweeter. And uh, this happens to be the, uh, the wine that we had on our honeymoon. Probably a different year though. Over here they have shirts. And uh, let's see, I don't see, don't see prices on them. They also have some hats down here. and many more bottles of wine all around the walls of this room. These look like they're different. Uh, this one says spiced cherry wine. There's a cherry wine sangria, just a straight up cherry wine, cherry Riesling, lots of different flavors over in this area here. Some more shirts, as I mentioned before, some wine accessories. Oh, and check this out. It looks like they have ventured into some spirits, maybe? No? Oh, this is a dessert wine. Uh, that sounds good. That might be an option right there. Cherry Reserve, Plum Reserve. Over here, the uh, different types. Merlot, Gamay, Noir. I'm not familiar with that kind. Ensemble Red. <laughs> some other wine type items. Pinot Noir. And a Mish Mash, which I'm assuming is grapes from various vineyards. This is from 2019. Rosé. Again, the uh, late Sweet Harvest Riesling. This one is the uh, National Cherry Festival. And these are mostly Rieslings, it looks like. And check this out, a bunch more down this way as well. Lots to choose from. And now it's time for some sampling over here at the tasting counter. Well guys, here is the tasting menu. They have several different options to choose from. And I think what we're gonna do is the, up here it says, taste five wines for 10 bucks. 
So I think we're going to try that out, maybe uh, pick five that we both kind of like and go from there. All right, so this first one is a cherry Riesling. Yes. A very mild cherry flavor, but it's good. I do like it. This next one's a cherry wine sangria. It has uh, cherry wine with natural lemon, lime, pineapple, banana, and orange flavors. Yeah, and then we're on the cherry Riesling for you as well. Okay. Or no, oh. he's on sangria. Right. That's really good. So this is the one that is 75%. That's very good, actually. <laughs> and then when you bump down to the... That might be a, that might be a keeper wine. there. I might have to get a bottle of this. It's like really good. Right, so this next one is a Sweet Harvest Riesling. And uh, I think I've had something similar, but it smells amazing. That is a good wine. Perfect for Thanksgiving, Christmas. Definitely worth it. All right, next up is a Sweet Traverse Red. I am not a fan of Merlot's. I like sweet wines. This is a Sweet Red. And I have a feeling I'm going to really like this one. Not quite as sweet as I thought it would be, but it's still good. Definitely far sweeter than a Merlot, but I think the Riesling might have thrown me off a little bit. That Riesling is very sweet. This one's not quite as sweet as the Riesling. Last up is the Plum Reserve. And this one's a higher alcohol content, smaller bottle. A little more expensive. It kind of smells like a uh, very, very uh, potent bourbon or something like that. It's got a, it's got a little more kick to it. Let's try this out. Oh wow, that is really good. Might be my favorite. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. And like I said, guys, we ended up getting the sangria. It was just so good. We both really liked that one. So we got a bottle. It wasn't bad either, $10. It's a good wine. So guys, if you're in Traverse City and you're up on Old Mission Peninsula, stop by Chateau Grand Traverse and ask for Christy. She was awesome. She's new, but she was very, very helpful, very friendly. And if there was anything she didn't know, she was eager to go over and ask somebody and find out for us come check this out guys it's a great place and they have awesome wines it's a tough decision because we liked a few of them but sangria won out <laughs> so guys there's a little scenic turnoff right outside of chateau grand travers and uh, it's right off the road here and you can see both sides of the peninsula from where we're at maybe if i raise the camera up high enough you can see the water over on the other side there. And then as we come down this way, looking past Chateau Grand Traverse, check this out. Just amazing how beautiful this is out here, overlooking the vineyard, out into the bay. Just a beautiful area. Well, guys, here in Traverse City, there's a lot of different things to do, a lot of different things to see. There are tons of beaches because, you know, there's a peninsula and a lot of beachfront property. There's also tons of great dining, tons of shopping, but there's a few things that you won't find anywhere else. And this happens to be one of them. This sculpture is made out of some rowboats and canoes and things like that and he's known as the River Guardian. And he was created in 1999 by Mr. Bloxma. Kind of an interesting looking character. And uh, he's probably, uh, probably uh, had some hard times weathering the last 24 years, 25 years or so. Uh, but you can see it looks like he's got a fish on one shoulder and uh, looks like a, uh, a horn, I guess, on the other. I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to be. His uh, ears and his face, and he's got like wire hair and a couple of arms. Kind of interesting. But this is the River Guardian, and you can find him about a block 
off from the main beach here in Traverse City. I do have one more spot I would like to check out while we're here in Traverse City, and then we're going to head south. We've got a couple places we're going to stop on the way back towards home. All right, guys, well, just a block over from the Canoe Man, the River Guardian, is the State Theater. And out in front of the State Theater, they have little squares with handprints from some of the stars. So let's see if we can find anyone we recognize. I have a feeling these are going to be difficult to read. This one right here says Susan Sarandon. We got uh, Tom Morello. Roger Corman. Uh, can't quite read. Li Liana Liberato. I'm not sure who that is. This one I cannot make out at all. This one is also difficult to make out. Over here, Christine Lottie. Uh, Amy Scott. Can't quite read that one. Matthew Modine. Michael Moore. Geraldine Chaplin. Bill Meyer. Phil Donahue. <laughs> Melissa Gilbert. This one is completely destroyed, so I have no idea who that's supposed to be. I cannot quite make this one out. It's a something baby. Not so sure about that one. The one up above, totally degraded. Can't make that one out. Uh, Michigan Rules, Paul Paul Fagg, Jay Roach, not too sure about this one, can't make that one out. And over here, if I can get uh, my shadow out of it, that one right there is Madonna. Again, another one up here, can't quite make out. And another one here. So some of these are uh, pretty aged, can't quite make them out. Okay, saw this over on the window here, and this will fill in the gaps that we could not read. Uh, Wim Wenders, I don't remember seeing that or being able to read it. Uh, Judd Apatow, Elmo and Kevin Clash, Fred Willard. Yeah, there's a few in here we couldn't quite make out this one too. So this is who is out here in front with all these squares. Well, that is it for Traverse City. We do have a few more stops on the way back. We're going to stop in Claire. There's a few places I got to show you there. And there's another place that I want to show you. So let's hit the road and go check those out. So guys, there's another place here in Traverse City, a little bit further away from the downtown area that I really wanted to show you. Back in the 1980s, there was a race to bake the biggest cherry pie um, and Traverse City wanted to do it. Unfortunately, Charlevoix beat them to the punch, baked the biggest cherry pie, but just, uh, I believe, a year or so later, in 1987, Traverse City baked the world's largest cherry pie. Now, this cherry pie was 28,000 pounds. 28,000 pounds. And I believe this was served up at the Cherry Festival, and none of it went to waste. So there was no waste whatsoever from this cherry pie. The, uh, the pie tin is 18 feet across. Um, by the way, the, uh, the record was uh, in, di in dispute with, uh, from Charlevoix because there was no bottom layer to the pie crust for this one. Uh, so they said, oh, it doesn't count. However, the Guinness Book of World Records says, yes, it does count. So officially, this was the world's largest cherry pie. For about three years and then in canada uh, they baked a cherry pie that was over 3700 pounds so you know just you just never know with these things let's take a quick look at this pie pan over here the official details this was baked by chef pierre bakeries 
the largest cherry pie, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, at least back in 1987 it was. Uh, the net weight was 28,350 pounds uh, and just about 18 feet, 17 feet, 6 inches across, baked right here and served up on July 25th, 1987. This pie pan is huge. Look at this thing. Now, this is one thing that you will not find in Charlevoix because they didn't save the pie tin. You can only find that here in Traverse City. Let's, uh, let's take a look. Let's see what this is. Yeah, it's pretty thick. I would say it's probably a, a quarter inch thick here at the edge. I don't know about the rest of it. Feels like it uh, might be stainless steel. I don't think that's aluminum. Whatever it is, is very heavy. I noticed there's also a little drain here that was probably added so that the water does not collect here inside this. And they've got a, uh, like a steel display piece that's uh, propping it up so you can see it. But there it is, guys. That is the world's largest pie pan, at least as of 1987. Well, guys, our next stop headed south brings us to the town of Clare, Michigan, and we are in front of the White House restaurant. I've heard they have great burgers. They've been in business since 1935. We're going to check it out, get ourselves a burger, have a little dinner and enjoy. And then we've got another stop just about a block away right after this. So guys, we just sat down inside. This diner is extremely tiny. Um, even the booths are really small. It's it's kind of cute the way it's set up. Uh, kind of low to the ground. Let's see if I can show you guys what it looks like. All right, well, without putting anybody in the camera view, just to give you an idea, these little tiny booths, even the floor is crooked. It's been here since 1935, so it's an old place. And just the other side of the booths, well, check that out. That's where they're cooking, right over there. The top of the wall is lined with all kinds of different things. There's stuff on the walls just to the side of us here as well. Different signs, Coca-Cola classic signs. All right, guys, here we go. This is my wife's burger, and she got the uh, cherry burger. It's got grilled cherries, walnuts, and I think jalapenos on it. Mine has jalapenos and green olives. We both got the onion rings, so we're going to try this out. All right, guys, take a look at that. Let's give this a shot. Mm. That's a good burger. $50. Really good. You know what I mean? Because... Uh, we had a couple of Very good. These onion rings are really good too. They're like a, a beer batter and not not like a bread. Really good. Real onion. Alright, so we were one of the last ones out and I just wanted to show you the tables here and how crooked the floor is. This is kind of funny, but it's been here for almost a hundred years. The White House established 1935. So the White House also does have some outdoor seating here. They have this area right next to the parking lot like kind of a uh, bar type situation, some benches and some places to eat your food. And also the bathroom, you have to leave the building and walk around to here to get to the bathroom. Well guys, the food at the White House was really good. I really enjoyed that burger. If you're in Claire, Michigan, you need to stop here. They have awesome burgers and it's definitely worth the stop. Well, guys, our next stop is just one block away, and we're standing out front right now. And that's right, located right downtown is the world famous Cops and Donuts. It is a donut shop and a coffee shop owned by cops. So let's head inside and get something to eat and maybe a coffee. Guys, I just stepped inside the door. Oh my gosh, it smells so good in here. There's, I'm not even in the bakery area. This is like the souvenirs, the different things that they sell 
with cops and donuts on it. This isn't even the bakery part, but it smells amazing. As you can see, they've got all kinds of different t-shirts. This is a uh, cops and donuts deer camp shirt. Back to blue. All kinds of different cops and donuts shirts. Different merch here. They've got cups. There's a book. Tells the story of how this uh, became a Cops and Donuts bakery slash souvenir slash coffee shop. A lot of Michigan favorites over here. And maple syrup. Cops and Donuts coffee. And all kinds of good stuff in here. Right here, there's a uh, police call box. And if you look, signs say Cops Ave and Donuts Street. Over here, these are yesterday's donuts. You can get the uh, older donuts, one day old, for a dollar a piece. We've also got some breads and some other things over here. Ooh, look at that. Cops Cashew Crunch. Looks good. Cookies and some breads. Yeah. And there's even more over this way, I think. This is a, oh, this this is actually where you eat. And this looks like the uh, the area where you sit down to eat. But let's take a look at the baked goods real quick, because they're right here. Oh, my. Look at these. Those look amazing. Oh, my gosh. Pineapple upside down cake. Oh. And then those muffins down there. Oh, that looks delicious down there as well. Got some fudge brownies, Rice Krispie treats. Looks like a bear claw of some sort. And some other things, cannolis. Different pastries over here. Lobster tails. And of course, they have donuts. Wow, those just look amazing. Check out those pies down at the bottom. And they've got these giant cookies up here. And I think that might be a cookie or a scone. I'm not sure. It looks really good, though. All right, guys, I want to show you what we got real quick. Well, first of all, they gave us a bunch of stickers. This is Cops and Donuts, and uh, my daughter's going to love those. And, of course, the box says Cops and Donuts as well. Now, we got quite a few items, but these are going home, and they'll be eaten over the next uh, several days. So I got the uh, blueberry-filled donut here for my daughter. We're going to split this one right now. This is a custard filled. There is a uh, oatmeal date cookie right here. Uh, the cannoli is to be given to uh, my mother-in-law actually. My wife loves lemon so we got her a lemon bar and I love pineapple upside down cake and I have not seen a mini one in a long time so that's what we ended up getting here. Now let's try this donut. All right so here it is custard filled donut. Let's give it a shot. Super soft. Really good. That's a good donut. Let me out of here. I didn't do it. I swear. Let me out. <laughs> so they have all kinds of police uniforms along the top of the walls here. Some are t-shirts, some are actual uniforms. Some might even be from uh, training, looks like. Quite a few. And then another thing I noticed, this is just a small portion, by the way. Notice all these patches up here. Well, there's an entire wall of these. This is just a small sampling of all the police patches from different areas, different states, different counties and whatnot. You can see over here, this one here, hopefully you can see that with the reflection coming in. There's all kinds of different states. There's the Indiana State Police, Nevada Highway Patrol, all kinds of stuff over here. Down here, a little uh, poster, History of the American Police Officer. And check that out, guys.
more over here. There's even one from Puxatawney, Pennsylvania, state of Ohio. Check that out. That's Cedar Point. There's a police patch from Cedar Point here, state of Ohio. And it uh, looks like they've got a graduating class. This one's a little bit easier to see. There's no glass on this one. So we can see all of these very well. We've got uh, Tucson, Arizona. Of course, check this one out. That's where we're at right now. That is Claire, Michigan. Detroit FBI. I don't know how recent all of these are. Some of them do not, uh, they may not be up to date. There's one from Ferndale, Arizona. Quite a few up here. Over, over in this section, there's some more stuff. Let me take a look. They've got some uh, different things over here. Looks like it, maybe this is a cookie jar. It says lift. Oh, yeah, I bet it talks when it has batteries in it. But uh, yeah, it's a cookie jar. It probably says, yeah, I caught you stealing the cookies or something funny. And up here, there's a picture. Uh, probably of some of the owners. Oh, and I should have used this earlier. I didn't see this. Perfect for your mugshot. Write your name, what you're arrested for, and your inmate number right there. When we were looking at the patches a few minutes ago, I said there was a lot, and there really is. Every one of these frames is filled with patches from different uh, police precincts and states and whatnot, all the way down this way, past the deer head down here, all the way down this hall, all the way down, way back against the back wall over there. All right, well, my wife told me I had to go check out the bathrooms, and I see why it says booking bathrooms. And guys, check this out. The bathrooms are jail cells. How funny is that? Well, guys, Cops and Donuts was a fun little stop. Excellent donuts. And I got to say, really good coffee, too. And I got to hit the road because we've got one more stop. So let's get on the road. Well, guys, we have arrived at our final location for this road trip. We're in St. Louis, Michigan, and you probably noticed behind me we're at a storage facility, which I, when I pulled in here, I thought, okay, I think maybe I put in the wrong address or something. Now, the reason that I thought I went to the wrong spot is because it says mini Mac mini storage. But then I noticed this, and as we pulled into the back, I came across this. All right, we're here with Corey. Corey, what's your last name? Uh, Edgar. Edgar. And he is the current owner here of the uh, Mini Mac Mini Storage. Yeah, that's right. All right, can you tell me a little bit about uh, the facility and what you've got going here? Uh, the facility, the previous owner, uh, his name was Chris. Uh, he started the facility originally as a storage facility, before that, a construction company. And um, when he came close to retirement, he wanted something, a fun project to do. Uh, and he's obsessed with the state of Michigan, as uh, my wife and I are. And uh, two years later, he had the Mackinac Bridge here. So, And there it is in the background. He operated, it's also a storage facility. Once he got out of contracting, um, he built the storage facility on the site along with the bridge. Along the way, uh, when I was in high school, I had a lawn mowing service. Uh, mowed lawns for the previous owner, Chris, and his wife, Mary. Over those years, we developed a good friendship, and uh, along the way, we bought the storage units from him. And, uh, and know, now you're how, the owner. That's how we're the owner now. So. <laughs> that's awesome. We, we try to keep it up for people to enjoy. Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, and it's getting a lot of notoriety. I've, I've seen people post about it on Facebook and whatnot and that's kind of why I wanted to stop by and uh, check it out and see it for myself and show my audience you know my subscribers the mini Mac okay yeah it gets a lot of uh, traffic uh, specifically for motorcycles 
Uh huh. A lot of them find like to come for a day trip, and just a, an excuse to ride somewhere. So we get a lot of motorcycles, especially on holiday weekends. Uh, large groups of 50 or 100 are not super uncommon. <laughs> wow. Okay. So. All right, Corey. Well, thank you. We're gonna go take a look now up close. And uh, another thing that uh, was pointed out to me: the uh, the little area on the other side of the bridge is the actual state of Michigan. Um, if you look at it from overhead, I, and unfortunately I don't have a drone, so I can't do a drone shot of it. But uh, I bet if you pull this up on Google Maps, it probably shows. Is that would that be fair to assume? Yeah. It does. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, okay. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> St. Louis, Michigan. Let's go take a look. All right. So we also met the original builder, whose name is Chris, and he was telling me this was a little personal project of his. He was kind of obsessed with the uh, Mackinac Bridge. Uh, really love the architecture, which, I mean, how can you blame the guy? I mean, it's, it is a beautiful bridge, and he has done an amazing job. He owned a construction company, and uh, he built the bridge based on that. And check this out. Got the, the water here on the sides. Oh my gosh, guys, there's even the, the metal grate in the middle, just like you'd see on the Mighty Mac. Got that metal grate so the uh, wind blows through it. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think he might have said there was lights on the top too. So from here, you may be able to see that that looks like the lower peninsula. You can see the thumb over there. On the left side, we'd be at the top and coming down off the bridge right now into Mackinac. And boom, we're there. Now, another thing I want to point out, over here, there's a little stone. And this stone is a uh, shape of Michigan. And this represents where we're at right now. This is St. Louis, Michigan. And you may or may not know this. So where we're standing right now with this stone here in front of me, um, that represents St. Louis, Michigan, where this bridge is at, the Minimac. And St. Louis, Michigan happens to be the geographical center of the Lower Peninsula. So we are in the center of the state right now. A lot of people think, oh, it's Lansing. It's not Lansing. It is St. Louis, Michigan, and we are in the center right now. This area is actually really beautiful. There's uh, actually some geese and ducks that, uh, I mean, who wouldn't want to have this as their, their home? But the, uh, the geese and ducks are using it, and they're enjoying the water. And here is the Mini Mac. I'm going to take a walk back over the Mini Mac once again. If you've ever wanted to see the sunset from the Mackinac Bridge, this is your chance. Of course, it's not the full size version, but the mini version. Well guys, that is gonna be the end of this road trip. We've had so much fun. We've been up to Traverse. We stopped in Claire. So many things we've seen, we've done. By the time this video airs, we should be at 3,000 subscribers. And I just wanna give a big thank you to everybody who's subscribed to this channel. All of you that are sharing the videos and liking it, really appreciate that. Feel free to leave any comments. Just so you guys know, I always try to put links to things in the show notes. I will put links to all of these locations in the show notes so you guys can check all of these out. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to click on that compass so you can stay subscribed to future videos just like this. And remember, adventure is just a short drive away. Traverse City on my mind, mountains leave the plains behind, mini Mac bridge in sight, Michigan stars tonight. Coffee stops